Hello there everyone and welcome to Overgrowth Weekly episode 82. Uh, my name is uh, Lukas Orsvarn. Hey guys, I'm Anton. How's it going? And uh, this uh, episode 82 of Overgrowth Weekly will be the final episode of Overgrowth Weekly ever. Probably. Ever. Or at least <laughs> the way it is now. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan anyway. Um, so I just added during the outro music uh, a, a, another item to the agenda because I felt like that was kind of missing and it's the first item right now. So refresh if you're watching the live stream and you want the full agenda. It says final episode. What? So uh, yeah, the final episode. I guess <laughs> we should start out by explaining the whole thing with that. Yes. Uh, it unmuted itself again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's so annoying. You should just uh, turn down the volume as well on it, so if it unmutes, it's not as bad. Twitch TV, man, what you gonna do, players? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so the reason that Overgrowth Weekly is going to end is basically, um, I guess basically it is from a lack of interest from me. I guess like in the end that's what it boils down to somehow I have lost my interest and I'm not sure if that's because I've been over doing Overgrowth Weekly for such a long time and uh, so I kind of burnt out on it and didn't like didn't feel like doing it or if it's just that I've been doing this game stuff lately and uh, I kind of felt like that like Overgrowth Weekly starting out taking up more of my time since I did uh, the game stuff like I did like eight hours a day on the game stuff and then going home and needing to do Overgrowth Weekly as well is kind of a bit much and then that may be made it so that I felt more like overgrowth weekly was a burden for me and it made me lose interest in the whole thing or whatever but um, so I don't know what came first there or or what happened there but uh, I mean you probably noticed we went from a weekly schedule to a monthly schedule because I tried to like bring down the workload turns out though um, it was just as much work <laughs> doing monthly because uh, the expectations rise when you uh, are only doing one uh, show every month. Um, so yeah, and also the amount of content and things like that. Uh, so <clears> yeah, <throat> in the end, um, I guess just lack of interest somehow from somewhere. And uh, now we're here. Yeah, I think I think the main thing to take away from this is that. Um you know, uh, Lucas's time needs to be spent elsewhere, and uh, it's it's a lot of time. You know, um, he put a lot of time and effort into making the show happen. So, um, <clears throat> you know, I don't think that it means necessarily the end of content from Lucas, or uh, certainly not the end of content from me. Um, but uh, this sort of regularly scheduled. Um, you know, podcast, uh, video cast, whatever you want to call it, you know, it needs to be, it needs to be something that we enjoy doing because the game is fun and, um, and this should be fun for us. So that's kind of, um, where we're headed. So, you know, there are, there are always options and other possibilities for how we could move forward. Um, and, you know, if, if someone feels like reaching out to me, I'm always uh, open to talk to people about, um, you know, uh, other ways to move forward. So, yeah, we can we can do that as well. Absolutely. <laughs> and like uh, like you said, like I won't stop making content or like, I guess <laughs> I haven't made a whole lot of content lately. Um, I will still be in the community, at least I will surely be keeping up to date on the alphas and dropping the IRC. Uh, from from time to time and check the forums and th things like that. I'll be lurking at the very least and we'll see what happens after that. Right. But you know, yeah, this whole situation, I feel kind of, it's sad though that this is going to go away. It's just sad. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's, certainly, it's certainly not the way we expected it to end, but, um, you know, sometimes... It, things have to change and, and maybe we can find a new format you know um, to uh, you know to, to, to still cover maybe not with Lucas but maybe I can find a way to cover um, certain aspects of things uh, you know to cover the show certainly one of the things I've been 
thinking about is that I that I already am making all of these uh, every every time that there's level updates for the menu mod um, that I kind of play through the levels anyway. So I think I might start uh, recording myself more and, and putting out videos of that. Um, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens. And no, this uh, this absolutely does not reflect development on overgrowth. It is not. It is not done, and, and the dev team is still continuing very much uh, on completing the game. <laughs> yes. Um, I guess people who are new or come here think that maybe Anton and I work on the game. We don't. We're not actually related. Well, you're more related, but you, you play it, <laughs> you know. And, um, yeah, we don't, make, we don't program or make art for the game, at least. So, right. Yeah. So, yeah. So this, is, this has been an entirely community driven show of, about mostly community content so um it's uh you know yeah <laughs> but you know it's uh, i guess when there is no overgrowth weekly that means that someone that there will be more, more room like even more room than there was before for someone else to do something similar if they want to as well i mean because I think this is uh, this has been really fun for me to do. I've been doing it for how long? Like one and a half years or something like that, I think now. Yeah, and just about one and a half years. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of fun, even though you know, you don't really think about that. It's a lot of work because it's so much fun until you know, as of late. But uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so p people should do more things like this uh, for sure. And uh, after this show, we're going to you know play some video games as well as well with the. I'm going to pay at least. Anton, I know you're quite busy. Because I, I feel like I'm going to have a hard time just turning off the stream, you know, for the last uh, for the last episode. So <laughs> I'm probably going to go for a while longer than, than we usually do. Just uh, without, uh, without like, like we did use the post-show, you know, post-show gaming session where we played a game for like an hour or something after the show. It's going to be kind of like that, I guess. Here you go, Glendon. So, OG yeah. Weekly post show. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, if you guys have any more questions during the show, um, just write them in the chat, and we'll try to to answer them as they come up. Exactly. Uh, so that's the final episode. What thing? Let's move on to the weekly alphas. So what has been going on in the weekly alphas, Anton? Well, for the most part, um, there were a couple weeks where we didn't see a lot of visual changes where we were mostly working on, uh, David was working on refactoring the code, um, which is, uh, <clears throat> it's a great, a great thing. It means that in the future, the game will be better optimized and run <clears throat> better. Excuse me. <clears throat> yes. Sorry. Um, and then the really big change that we've seen has been the um, addition of new uh, item attachment locations which means that you're now able to attach um, weapons and items to a character in different places on the character and this past week we saw a cool tweet uh, where david showed off uh, the future of the armor system where you see armor attached to uh, upper arm lower arm um, you know legs uh, and so there's there's definitely a new sort of inventory system coming into the game now and there you can see a a picture of what it looks like there it's it's a little too much <laughs> when <laughs> no, <it's> fine, everything <laughs> when everything is attached but uh uh yeah it's it's a cool it's a cool system and it will be um you know pretty exciting so yeah i'm uh, very excited about uh, about that part with the attachable armor things like I, like I said to you before, I think with the attachable items that we can have, plus the, um, you know, coloring the, the, like, clothes and things that we can do already, I think that will be enough for customization um, from, what I, from what I can see, because then, like, you have the, your own color at least, and then you can cover the rest up with, like, cool armor stuff or something like that. Exactly. I think it's pretty badass. So, yeah, I think it's it's great. So... Um, excited to see this sort of development and and their developments um, that directly affect the user the the player so it's good to see them coming into their own yep yep, um, yep. so we have a question from uh, Malmo 999 or Malmo as I'm sure it's supposed to be um, 
He asks, uh, what inspired you to make Overgrowth Weekly originally? And uh, I guess that's that would be a question for me. I, um, hmm, I'm not like entirely sure it was such a long time ago. <laughs> but um, I think it kind of went like this, like I was done with, uh, I was working on a uh, like feature length movie that didn't get finished by the way, uh, that was going to be made in, in a game in the Source Engine. And uh, that kind of died out and um, I had been doing tutorials for the Source Engine uh, before, like uh, mapping tutorials, I have like 25 in total so far I think. and. Um, and my interest in the Source Engine had kind of faded uh, for a long time and it kind of stopped so I didn't like have anything to do anymore so I was open for something new and was looking for something else that I could spend my free time on because I'm like that, I can't just play video games all day, that get me, gets me depressed <laughs> so I need to have something to do and uh, I was really into overgrowth at that time of course and uh, I had been looking at people like uh, like we had Podcast 17, which is a podcast for the Source Engine that I had been following, and I was on like two episodes there, I think. That was kind of bad, actually, because um, I came on Podcast 17, I was actually like on the crew there, but uh, my interest in the Source Engine was just about like to to like go, go very much down there, so yeah, two episodes I think I was in. And uh, so yeah, Podcast 17 was an inspiration, and uh, uh, I was watching as well uh, Day 9, uh, if you know who that is, a famous StarCraft 2 guy, and uh, I'm not sure was, I'm not sure well, if NS2 was also, HD was out there at that time. It, it was, it yeah. definitely was, yeah. Yeah, that was surely an inspiration as well. And I think those three were like the main inspirations for me. I wanted to take like the best things from from those three as I saw and try to like have them as inspiration and make my own show about overgrowth, which yeah, just you know a lot of news and a lot of community stuff goes on about overgrowth. And I was just wanting to try it out, see what happens. And so I did and uh, started going quite well. I got uh, like quite a good response and I just kept going and uh, you, Anton, you joined quite early on, if I recall correctly. Um, From what I remember, um, <laughs> and again, I don't really remember, is that uh, um, fairly early on, like the third or fourth episode, you had a guest kind of join you, and then you thought it would be fun to have me as a guest. So I came on, and, and we kind of hit it off, because uh, that was kind of really the place where we started talking for real the first time. Mm-hmm. And then uh, you kind of like, well, I still have an opening if you want to come back. And then we kind of realized that this conversational dynamic was a little more interesting for people than just um, than just listening to us to one person sort of prattle on about what was going on. So yeah, yeah, exactly. it was um, <clears throat> yeah. And then you asked me to join, and I was I was actually blown away at first, and then I I kind of really ended up liking it. So it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, so so it it was actually I recall it too now now that you mention it. It was basically like you were on the show once as a guest, and then I was like, well, do you want to be on next week as well? And then I was like, well, maybe you want to be next week as well. And I was like, after that, I'm like, do you want to join Over with Weekly forever? <laughs> exactly. And, uh, so so yeah, that's how that yeah. happened. It just kind of grew sort of organically. It's such a a wolf fire term. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> it overgrew into its current state. Right. Yeah, exactly. It's quite cool, quite cool. So, uh, let's see, what else? Yeah, weekly alpha stuff we were talking about. Uh, yeah, attaching items to characters. Um, you can currently, they have like, you can attach like weapons to weapon slots in the current alpha, but uh, hopefully we will see this uh, armor stuff being added soon. And I'm expecting people to make loads of armor stuff for this, just so you guys know. Because uh, <laughs> people want to customize their characters and like getting your own characters in the engine is kind of hard right now. So I think this uh, customization thing will be quite good uh, until, um, you know, the character creation thing gets a bit easier. I just hope they have support for like helmets and uh, like, uh, what are they called? Like boots or shoes, you know, things like that. I want to have uh, armor stuff all over the place. Because <laughs> helmets are badass. Yeah, well, it seems like. Uh, uh... Oh, you, I'm, I'll ask you. 
I can hear you. Can't hear you, Anton. Uh, I could hear you once. Can you speak? No, <laughs> Anton. 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 Yes. Yes. I can't. Are hear we you. having? Oh, I can hear are you. We having, no, are we I can having? Are we having mumble you. problems again? Okay. I don't know what it was, but uh, um, the entirety of what you said there was lost. It was just entirely quiet, <laughs> and I tried oh, speaking no. to you, but it seems like you didn't hear me. <laughs> I, I didn't hear you. There there have been some problems with our mumble server today, so yeah. hopefully that doesn't happen again. Um, anyway, uh, what I was saying is that I was reading in a in a um, Twitter conversation from David is that uh, all of the armor attaches to bones that already exist in the wireframe, and so uh, any place that there is a bone, in theory, he could add a spot to uh add armor so hopefully that means that a head could have armor and um i mean it, it makes sense to have a helmet if you're gonna be chopped at with a giant broadsword you know so yeah <laughs> that's that's really nice so he's just attaching them to the bones that's good it, that's what that's what it sounds like and then yeah. that way it also um makes sense too uh helps with the animation and stuff like that so yep. seems good yeah but uh, the armor in this game, um, like something about armor in a lot of fantasy games, like I think a lot about like uh, the Elder Scrolls for Skyrim and uh, the fifth, uh, no, the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion and the fifth installment Skyrim. Um, you have like solid plate armor, and then when you move your body around, the plate armor like bends with your body and things like that. That's so <laughs> funny. I guess that won't happen when you just attach it to the bone, which is good. Yeah, I would, I would guess so. Yeah, I, though he probably could make that happen because he's David. But uh... <laughs> I don't, I don't know why you would want your plate armor to bend. But yeah, that's kind of my point. It's very weird <laughs> when that happens. Like I always think that's funny in those games. So hopefully yeah. that won't happen in, in this game. Uh, I think it won't. Any users. So that's basically <laughs> the only real big new feature that's coming in, right? Uh, currently, yes. Yeah. Um, well, and I mean, as uh, and as part of that, he added um, a, a few items, a few a few new objects that are now uh, can interact with the environment, which will be a big. You know, they have physics applied to them. You can pick them up. You can attach them to your body. Things like that, which is a a big deal. And um, and then also a few new uh, hot spots where. You can he can create objectives within the game, so yeah, there's definitely some cool stuff. Yeah, and Tonjevic Ton uh, Ton uh, comments that uh, you know when you have the armor following the movement of the character, it solves problems with the clipping and intersection. And yeah, that's true. Uh, I know that's why they do that, but uh, it still it looks funny when solid plate steel just bends because someone moves their torso. It just looks funny. <laughs> <clears throat> I can bend plate steel with my abs of steel. <laughs> of, well, polygon, so I guess that makes sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, so moving on. Uh, that's the weekly alpha. Let's uh, check out the community levels uh, that has been coming out this month. And uh, there have been a few. Maybe you should, uh, <laughs> should uh, talk us into that uh, subject, Anton. Um, yeah. Uh, holy cow, you guys have been going crazy making more community levels. And the the quality just keeps um, going up and up. Um, I'm un afraid we don't have any videos recorded, do we? So mm. unless you play it live, we're not going to be able to see anything. Um, although we could pull up YouTube videos if we have to. Um, so, for example, uh, uh, Girth made a new level called Rooftops, which is um, inspired somewhat by... Uh, mirror's edge and the places where you um, you know where you're you're running around on the rooftops and so th it's a lot of new custom content uh, skyrise uh, skyscraper type high-rise buildings that you run around and jump and it's a lot of fun looks very cool um, another like big sprawling city of skyscrapers so that's a lot of uh, uh, a lot of fun yeah, it's, um, it's fun jumping around on it. He's uh, Gert has just become the you know city guy somehow. He just makes cities now. 
<laughs> this is Java. Yeah. <laughs> and and they're quite impressive. Um, yeah. You know, that e even David, when he first saw videos of them, he said, I didn't even realize our engine could do that. Like, yeah. um, which is cool. It, uh, originally, when he was making cities, he was making them as a single object, which kept the frame rate uh, actually really high. It didn't require as much processing because it was only one object to load. Um, however, with the shading that he started doing, he's divided them up, but it's still not as many objects as um, it seems like uh, because entire skyscrapers are not modular the way that buildings are designed in overgrowth, but they're single objects. So um, they work really well and uh, it is, it's a lot of fun to play around with. So yeah. what, what I like about it is that he, like if you remember in the big city level, he has this one place where there's kind of a, he has made a like, jumping puzzle or, you know, it's a place where you're supposed to climb up, right? But uh, all, everywhere else you can just jump around like normal. And uh, he has more of those places in his uh, rooftop level where there are like small things sticking out from walls and places and things like that where where you're kind of helped or like where there is kind of like, oh, here's a challenge, try to scale this or whatever. And uh, I like that. I think that's fun. I think some, something that he probably should have added would be like the new objectives. I don't know if those were out when he made this level, but um, being able to have like, okay, at least just visit these four places on the level and then you can finish it. And it would be nice to have somewhere to like pointing you in a direction or something like that. It would be nice. Right. Certainly in IRC, he mentioned uh, when he released it that he had wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if that's something that we'll see released. Um, but uh, certainly other people have started using his maps and creating their own stories. Uh, this last week, um, I think it's Hoohoo4 is the name of the user. He, he released a map using the big city that tells the story where you are a dog uh, trapped in a cat city. And you have to take a, um, a bag of explosives to the capital and, uh, and then when you jump into this spot, um, it actually launches you like the, the, uh, um, <laughs> like the city exploded and launches you ridiculously high into the air. Mm -hmm. Actually, <laughs> When it when it launches you into the air, you go so high. I think I timed it. It was something like a six minute fall before you <laughs> landed again. Nice. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty ridiculous. So, um, yeah, he's saying now he wants people to create their own stuff with stuff with his maps. So, hopefully, we'll see some some uh, some interesting runs. You know, maybe some speed runs and uh, set path courses where you can. Um, do something so yeah i really think though that um that you that girth you i was speaking to you girth you should uh, try to like make your own uh, like add some kind of objective to it at least because uh, it's like why not you know uh, but uh, of course <laughs> you're the one who decides what to do with your levels but uh, i know that i would have enjoyed the release of your level more if i, I just had something pointing me in a direction yeah, but yeah, uh, your levels, of course, really nice stuff. No, the the level, of course, that we're looking at right now is his first level called Big City, which uh, feels very similar to um, sort of the Assassin's Creed era, sort of medieval based city where um, you have a lot of a kind of, a lot of kind of focal points, and then pieces sticking up out of the way and and things like that. Um, it's not based on a grid by any means, you know, it's kind of a little more organically grown, which, which is sort of the way that these cities were developed. They, they weren't built in grids the same way that modern cities are built. Yeah. Um, you know, if you go to New York, it's like one big grid, whereas if you go to London, you can get lost in circles for hours. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the... The skyscraper map is a little more, um, a little more like a modern city, which is also pretty cool. So, yeah. um, I, I sort of cheated, I guess you could say. I, I've been playing around with this other mod, came out, which was double jump mod, and um, 
it, it allowed you to to do use a double jump and so uh <laughs> there there was no more vertical climbing issues because you could just double jump everywhere it's it's a really fun mod although it gives you maybe too much air control in my mind it it kind of feels like a um a platformer but um yeah it's mm-hmm. uh it's a fun mod also i highly recommend giving that a shot so um let's see some other maps that came out uh and these have all uh there's one map that came out this morning that i have not yet had time to um uh wow why isn't that working um huh my program launcher is not working uh (laughs) weird yeah um so so all of the uh what's going on that's mac for you anton that's max for you (laughs) oh uh no (laughs) i still had my i still had my input source set to russian and so it didn't recognize (laughs) my (laughs) my source okay um (laughs) I, i was like this is confusing uh so um where was i going with this uh everything except for one map that was released today was uh (laughs) is is already in the the menu mod so if you update your menu mod you get a lot of levels i think we're at 154 custom made maps now at this point um some of the real highlights this week uh are by this guy uh Makra Chunia, I don't know how to say his name, but he um, he he made two levels that he he called uh, yeah 154 custom maps. So uh, he made uh, two levels that are holiday themed. One is sort of an autumn theme, and one is a, a Christmas theme. <laughs> and um, he's really he's really sort of pushed the boundaries of what you can do with the the content there he's created very realistic looking houses um christmas presents and uh, pumpkins and a lot of really interesting um locations uh when i was playing the the harrowed acres you have to run through a cornfield and uh, there was a guy hiding in there and he jumped out of nowhere and kind of <laughs> scared me yeah. and uh it was pretty awesome uh, I think that with the addition of some, you know, suspenseful music that, and and maybe like a darker shader and, and maybe some, uh, like volumetric fog or something, that level could really be, um, cool and frightening if you let it be that way. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I thought that it's uh, it's kind of cool. What I thought was cool about it was the, um, always the world they har- harrowing something. The Harrowed Acres. Harrowed Acres, yeah. Um, I really liked the like theme with the level. It felt con- concise. Like this was also kind of a modern level. It's kind of, it had a silo, silo um, that I think you put grain in or something, and there was like a big house and you know the field where the guy comes running at you in the beginning, things like that. It felt like it had a, a an overarching theme that made sense. So that was kind of cool. Also seeing like this building that he had there, I remember it was looking very like normal building like somehow. It felt like a modern building, very much more than other buildings that I've seen in Overgrowth so far. But yeah. Right. Cool level. And it's also one of those levels that you can play through um, in a relatively short amount of time, which is also nice because, you know, you can finish it and then you can try to like go faster or try different tactics without having to like play for 20 minutes or something right and uh, without without even writing a story like there's no text but you you understand what's going on as you find um victims so to speak of the of the main bad guy so yeah yeah <laughs> yeah nice so one. it's and uh, and the other cool level, level he made was um north pole something yeah north pole, north pole. Uh huh. Yeah. And um, 
it really it's it's crazy like there's this beautiful looking christmas tree with the uh, baubles on them and um and christmas presents underneath it and then like random elves in a factory and there's even like a little uh linux um uh <laughs> uh penguin inside on a conveyor belt full of toys that they're making and uh, a lot of little cool details and things like that so it's uh it's you know it's it's a fun level and then you fight a dog that's dressed like santa claus that's <laughs> tough so it's fun he he made a couple other levels um a, a playground level that has some some cool jumping around and then some uh pain in my butt uh parkour stuff <laughs> which it's actually actually i i i've been able to do all of the parkour except for one section where it's it's one of these things where you have to um wall run back and forth and then when you get to the end you have to stop moving forward and climb up and uh that's always tricky is stopping that forward momentum so i'm always bad at that section <laughs> mm. but other than that i can do the level but he also he does some things that that uh is very useful where when you reach a certain point you sort of get a a checkpoint just by having ground there so you don't feel like you're gonna die if you just try the next section so um that's nice yeah yeah that's something that we've been complaining about earlier on other levels like yes. you fall down and then you lose which is it's always <laughs> boring but uh, you know yeah or or you fall down and the level restarts yeah um yeah so uh yeah, definitely some good. Oh, and some new Lugaru challenge level remakes, which to me, it's it really shows off um, David's uh, understanding of level design that maybe he didn't even mean to. I'm not sure. But even now, when I play these Lugaru challenges remade in Overgrowth, um, they have the same level of excitement i i i feel a sense of accomplishment whenever i finish them even though they're simple you just you show up there's a couple of bad guys you have to f fight and then when you do then you're done uh but somehow they still feel very rewarding as levels so yeah i um, wonder i wonder if that's uh, due to the level design or if that's due to them being in a pack of challenges earlier you know what i mean because when they're like labeled as okay, this is a challenge. You need to finish this level to come to the next challenge, right? And then when you finish it, and you know you you feel good, like yes, I finished the challenge. And then now because of this level that, that that you're playing now feels like and looks like that level, um, you get kind of the same feelings because of that, maybe. Maybe uh, that that could be, um, but yes, it's uh, it's surprisingly good. I, yeah. I I really like them. Okay, so. But I agree, like, uh, when I play, uh, I played no, the earlier ported challenges, if, if you want to call them that, and uh, they do feel, they just feel good. You just want to, they're, they're the levels that you want to play over and over for some reason. Like, yeah. why? <laughs> I don't know, but, but they're I fun. I agree. <laughs> and and the ones the ones that have been released the most recently which are level eight which is one that's at night with uh fire and level uh 13 level 13 i used to like it used to drive me crazy in lugaru it was the one where there was a a rock and there's a wolf standing on top of it and there's guards walking around them and then there's two more wolves over the hill and another wolf oh, with a spear that one. <laughs> yes <laughs> see you you're like Oh yeah, and this one is similarly like cool yet frustrating. And so, when you die, you're like, "No, I shouldn't have died." And then when you eat it, you're like, "Yes, I did it." And uh, uh, yeah, so that's one of those. Just the level is really good, even remade in Overgrowth. So, yeah. I'm kind of um, getting the feeling though that if if I like ran into a level that wasn't one of these challenge levels. <laughs> and it wasn't that hard, I would just write it off as, you know, oh, this level is just too hard. Yeah. 
It's a bad level because it's too hard. But now because it is a remake of a Luger Change level, it like that makes it more real somehow. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I think that that because it is designed to be progressively more and more difficult. This one is further along. It's near the end of the challenge maps. Um, yeah, it's uh, it definitely. Um, yeah, it's definitely one of those harder ones, but you feel very rewarded when you beat it. Yeah, it's it's so. a nice level. It is. Like, yeah. you're kind of, in your mind, you're always like, hmm, should I kill the rabbits first and then the wolves? Or, like, what's harder? Is it harder to kill? What are the four rabbits on the level, or are there three? Uh, this version, there's three. I thought there was four on the original one, but yeah. uh, I could be wrong. So it's like, what do I kill the rabbits first and then the wolves, or do I try to kill the wolves? And then, like, when you kill the wolves, you're like, yes, all right. And then you're like, all oh, right, I have to get three rabbits as well. <laughs> and then you die on that instead. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> right, right. Oh, so, yeah. So I think it's it, it must be three wolves and three rabbits. I think that's what it was. So, okay. um, but uh, but there are two, two weapons. There's a spear... There's a spear instead of a staff uh, in the Overgrowth remake, and then there's a knife. And, you know, weapons are still incredibly well-powered, you know. Um, yeah. So, in some ways, almost too much. But um, but it's still fun, I gotta say. Uh, I actually end up playing the level not quite the same way that I used to in Lugaru, but very close, where I take out certain people in a certain order and then i instead of going to the two wolves i jump over and i get the the weapon from somewhere else and come back and yeah mm -hmm. it's uh you know the easiest thing to do in the overgrowth remake is go and steal the spear and then you just beat everybody with the spear that's but, cheating though <laughs> is it cheating it's no, it's not really. it's it's just a, a gameplay choice you know now, if you throw the spear at everybody and they die because <laughs> because the spear kills them instantly uh, because of the settings it has right now, that's, uh, um, <laughs> you know, that's not quite as fair, but yeah, yes. Yes. Okay, so any other levels? Any other cool levels this week? Um, those, were, those were my favorites. I mean, there was an interesting one uh, called Fetch. You throw a knife and a dog fetches it oh, for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> um which which as a level is uh is not um it's not like a level that you want to play over and over but to understand how he created this level and um and make this wolf fetch a knife and bring it back to you repeatedly was pretty cool <laughs> yeah and when he falls so, like chips over the thing at the end and you know that's fun too <laughs> yeah exactly so um did the star bunny i guess the second star bunny map came out since our last episode which is a continuation of the sort of star trek themed episode uh levels yeah so it's um a lot of cool stuff definitely yeah and a lot the of cool jump levels mod as well which is cool double jump mod there's a another new mod uh, a more blood mod so if last blood mod is not enough blood for you, you mm -hmm. can install Timbal's uh, more blood mod and have more blood. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems like we're getting like that's going to be an entire subcategory of mods. Like when you're installing some launcher, they will be like maps and then like camera mods and like blood mods. Maybe, like an entire <laughs> like 200 mods just dedicated to blood. All right. Well, the the next blood mod that someone has to do, other than adding like three times the amount of blood that the more blood mod has, is you need to you need to create a blood mod that when you kill somebody, the blood splashes on the camera and drips down in your face so that it distorts your vision. Yes. That's my that's my challenge to to you modders <laughs> who want to make more blood mods. Yes. The true the true gruesomeness. It's just like in real life. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, David uh, didn't David like say something about that sometime where like when you get hurt in games nowadays you get blood on 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 your eye I guess or something. For some right. Reason. 
and that would like in reality hurt very much and you you know you don't run around with a camera like in your face so if you get blood <laughs> it's probably gonna be on your eye right and anyway, um, it's fun stuff yeah <laughs> well you know it's it's funny because he david really talks about liking the the sort of reality of 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 you know a, a dam you know when you are damaged like with a sword or something if you're stabbed you don't like immediately start bleeding out you know is one is one thing like if you're if you're really dam like hurt badly the blood is going to pool inside that part of your body before it fills up and starts leaking out and you know so that's one of the reasons why his his blood you know system you see the the thing happen and then it, like you see a little trickle at first and then like a little bit more blood comes as it goes on but it's not like you know it's not like there's a a, a reservoir of blood in every spot on your body that suddenly is just going to like explode out <laughs> <laughs> but why not i want explosions in the blood the two favorite that's what, things <laughs> that, that's what modding is for oh uh, so. yeah Ah, uh, yeah. Blood mud and get category. The... <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So. So let's let's move on. Maybe do you realize we've been gone for forty five minutes? This is insane. <laughs> this, by the way, this is always the part of the show where we have fun. Is actually talking about the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I, what what's next? Um. So we move on to the fan art. Uh, I'm guessing. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I haven't made a fancy collage this time either, so it's going to be... Okay. I'm just going to switch to the camera so you can see what's going on here. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Swoosh to the <laughs> camera. No. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Yeah, I have a mod, by the way. I have an extension in Chrome that allows me to scroll like this. It's very useful. Um, scroll bar anywhere. It's called a check it out. Thumbs up. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's just built into the Mac OS, but yeah, right. I can imagine. <laughs> uh, so sorry, you 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 had to dig at me. I had to counter. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, is this one new for this month? I'm not. Even, I don't even know. Well, it's made by Seds anyway. That's Joe anyway. Well, he it fixed says the leg. August second. So yes. Yeah should be but i thought i remembered it but it's probably because it's 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 a fix uh so yeah it's turner he fixed the leg oh yeah yeah down this isn't really a good fan art so i'm gonna skip past that <laughs> and receiver fan art by said Who whoopie doo da no sleep at all there you go some receiver fan art it's a I've, insane it's terrifying yeah and and uh and uh Corbin 3 has the most terrifying comment for it. Beep. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm going to have nightmares tonight. That's, that's for sure. Beep. <clears throat> and then we have a Manjaro Wolf. I'm just going to read what, he, what uh, this guy writes because, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think it would just be best that way. Hey, everyone, been working on some stuff for OG lately, so I thought I'd post some concept art every now and then. Enjoy. Like anything, I start with crude drawings and concepts. Uh, a lot of squigglies in there. And as you can see, as an image of, I'm guessing it's Turner in the sunlight. It looks like Turner in the sunlight to me. Yeah. And uh, then I get, got around to refining the images. Look at how peaceful he looks and slightly annoyed. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> So peaceful and slightly annoyed. Oh goodness! That one reminds me a lot of the the Wolf Slayer uh, concept art that Aubrey did, which is so cool. It is. It it's is. very cool. And here we have Turner performing a high kick, so graceful, like a swan with a machete. Sparkly eyes. <laughs> Look at him. This yeah. one is actually really cool. Really it's a very one. it's a very kung fu style kick um at least uh when doing choi li foot which is one of the styles of kung fu i do um you when you kick and you block underneath your your body so that someone doesn't kick you in the grind yeah <laughs> sweet <laughs> yeah exactly um, yeah what, what i like about this one is especially like um 
like the uh, expression in all the lines somehow, the expression in like everything, the details, it looks just uh, hardcore somehow. Really nice, really nicely done. Well done. Yep. Um, someone says I missed something. I'm just gonna switch to us while I click the link just to be sure that it's not something bad. Oh, that <laughs> one, it's because it was just text, right? There we go. Um, by said, am I correct, Freshel? Nice. Yeah, he made, this, he made this one. He didn't post it in the thread because it's too big, and I guess he didn't want to downsize it. Uh, there you go. Uh, I like that one a lot, too. Yeah. I like the, the detail, and, and I like said's style. It's definitely pretty cool. Yep, yep, absolutely. So, nicely done there. Let's see, can we get... Here we are. Sweet. Um, and uh, next up from this guy. Who is this guy, anyway? Manjara <laughs> Wolf. Uh, all right moving on and now there here is something i've been working on for a while can you guess who it is probably not this image is a little awkward to stare at <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right it's turner's wife sarah from luguru i felt sad that she and uh, their child april only lasted like 10 minutes i wanted to get to know them somehow uh, but thanks to raiders and a backstabber that won't be happening anytime soon so this is April uh, Turner's uh, ex, I guess he's uh, he is widowed now. He says what is it called? Can uh, uh, yeah, he's a widower. He's a widower. Okay, it sounds like someone who who creates widows, like he <laughs> <laughs> like he kills like <laughs> wives or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm I'm just surprised that it took ten minutes for him to get through those first couple overgrowth. Uh, levels yeah man <laughs> I, I actually it took me i i would say i was playing lugaro for like three or four months before i realized there was a campaign <laughs> <laughs> oh and uh, you're like oh sweet a map oh challenges <laughs> well I, I was just playing the challenges like the map i just thought it was a texture and i didn't read the little thing like click on the map to begin and so yeah. i just played the challenges a whole bunch of times and then i was and like, like this is I a wonder great if... game and you're yeah, like and then campaign. i was like <laughs> <laughs> exactly so and that's when anton became uh, a uh, luguru fanboy yeah it was around <laughs> that same time that i said if they ever make a sequel to this i'm buying it right away yeah and uh, i certainly did buy overgrowth which is essentially lugaru too I bought it within, I think, a week of when they announced it. So yeah, super cool. <laughs> well done, Anton. That's right. Uh, as as Unhero says, if you ever make a game and you want me to play it, <laughs> make sure that I can find the game. Otherwise, uh, I just may not figure it out. <laughs> what? I don't get it. <laughs> he says when you make it, when you make a menu, you need to make it Anton. Oh right. Proof. Yes. <laughs> make it Anton proof. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> um, so moving on here with the art from oh man, I forget this guy's name. He's new to the forums. So he made fourteen posts. He's good at drawing though. Manjaro Wolf. He has made this image. He writes. Is that pretty? Yeah. Plus, on a side note, I have some weird curves where I need to see a detailed version of everything I like. So I think it's only fair that we bring his wife and kid back from the dead to give them more detailed clothes and body. Please don't tell Turner he will kill me for this. Uh, yeah, is this Sarah again? Yeah, I'm guessing it is. So he, he's planning like an overgrowth reunion DLC where you'll be able to uh, get skins for Sarah and April uh, for overgrowth. Sweet stuff. Yeah. And moving right along, we have the wolf tire from last month. Always, <laughs> I like that one. Well done. It's a great, it's a great image. And uh, took a pretty cool screenshot. Says Ma Macro Macro <laughs> He's he's the guy that made the the uh, holiday map pack that I couldn't pronounce his name either. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, took a pretty cool screenshot. Decided to slap an overgrowth log on it. Turned out pretty good, I think. Can I? Do that. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yeah. So yeah. one thing though, when you're taking screenshots, this is to everyone, by the way. If you're taking screenshots, make sure to turn up the graphics and the resolution and everything to the max. Because when you're taking screenshots, you don't need to worry about uh, 
you know, frame rate, because <laughs> it's only one frame. Because I noticed right away that, you know, the texture, the grass textures are like blurry because it doesn't have the maximum texture quality and you can see the aliasing on the edges and things like that. Right. Also be sure to calculate shadows and, and ambient occlusion, which makes a difference. Yes, absolutely. Um, and here we have one from Mr. Austin six minutes ago. I was going to cover this uh, anyway, but he put it here in the final third as well. Um, <laughs> phew, I hope I was fast enough. Yes, you were. Uh, open it up in a new tab. So this is uh, concept art for his... It was originally concept art for his game. I don't quite recall what it's called. It's like uh, a fighter game, though. Determ... No? Not something D? Anyway, tell us in the chat and I'll, I'll say what it's called. <laughs> but he writes things in the clouds, and I guess this is, I say, uh, a thing for overgrowth weekly since we're ending and things like that. Uh, it's kind of hard to see the, the top here, but it says, thank you, Silverfish and Anton. I don't know if that's visible at all on stream. Oh, I should probably not cover it up with our images. There you go. <gasps> thank Come on. you, Silverfish <laughs> and Anton. Oh, Yay. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Autumn, for that. And that is the end of uh, of the fan art watch. Uh, let's keep on moving. Let's keep on moving. So next up, we have questions from Russia. So since you're the one who received the questions, uh, you can explain, <laughs> like, introduce us to this topic, Anton. Sure. So um, there's a uh, uh, a community member that's in IRC that I chat with a lot that we've talked about before. Uh, Sergei from Russia and uh, there's there's apparently a growing interest in Russia about um, overgrowth uh, and one of the things is that they don't necessarily have a, an easy time translating the, the information into Russian and the videos so uh, he has a, a whole community of people that um, are interested in the game and interested in the development of the game and he they, they had some questions that they wanted to have answered. So he put together a list of quite a few questions that um, that uh, I've been looking at and Lucas has been looking at. And, um, 42 questions, in fact. Which 42 is the questions. meaning of life, isn't it? Uh, it's the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Oh, right. The answer yes. to life, the universe, and everything. Thank you. Yes, but now we need to remember what the question is. What? The question? Well, there were 42 of them. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> your, your Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> Dude, I don't know about this stuff, Anton. I just, I'm just like, oh, that's a thing? Well, I guess I'll say that then. <laughs> in, in, in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, they invent a computer that um, its sole purpose is to answer the question of what's the, what, you know, what's the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And he says, the answer is 42. And by the time he has figured it out, the the uh, um, the computer has figured it out. He uh, uh, everyone has forgotten exactly what the question is. So oh, I see. Um, <laughs> it took yeah. a while. Yeah, and so so then he invented. Then they said, okay, let's build a new computer that can then tell us what the question was, and the computer was the planet Earth. And uh, now I've given you a lot of spoilers. <laughs> well, it's good. I don't need to uh, read the books or anything then. You saved <laughs> a lot of time, Anton. You saved me a lot of time there. <laughs> Thanks, man. You should, you should still read the book. <laughs> okay. Jeez. Maybe <laughs> I will. After I'm done, uh, I'm reading Watership Down now, by the way. I haven't read nice. that yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've never read it either. I felt like I should. I felt like I should. It feels like people think that I shouldn't. Uh, yeah. Any users. Let's move on with these questions. Um, questions from Russia. Um, we're just going to go through all of the questions, I guess, all of the ones that apply to, that we have any way of answering at least. And then we might answer it uh, with a, a lengthy discussion or we might just not. It depends on the question. <laughs> we'll see right. what happens. Because there are 42 of them and we don't want to stay here forever. We're already <laughs> almost an hour in, so here yep. we go. 
Question one: Which multiplayer modes are are you planning? Cooperative mode? Uh, will there be cooperative play? I guess. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a question that we get all the time in IRC and uh, online. So, uh, because of the the nature of the game, it's uh, fast combat and and need for speed. There are no definite plans saying yes, there will be online multiplayer. So, um, Aubrey always says if there will be. Uh, online play they're gonna try to make it co-op there probably will not be any player versus player online multiplayer although there is currently already local multiplayer so yes. um yeah Did that's you... the best answer you're gonna get <laughs> um question two what about open world um free interaction with objects characters etc or uh, will the gameplay be similar to luguru and uh yeah it's it will be a lot like uh, luguru it will be uh, like individual levels where you play through and there we haven't really we don't really know yet if there's going to be like level transitions or things like that but yeah it's going to be level based at least so yes probably next to no like open world elements but open levels meaning that you can achieve your goals in any way that you choose yes so you will not be like forced down mm. A certain path to do what you need to do you will always have your own choices and decisions on how you want to approach a level yep question three story will be linear or do you have um or can you like i guess choose which way to progress the story yeah the plan is that it will be a mostly linear story with the potential they've said in the past the potential of one or two um choices that you can make along the way but uh pretty much a, a linear story yes a shame we, we can, maybe we can read the questions like you read one question now so you read the next question and then sure. I answer that and then we do the other way around all right so the next one was uh how many characters will be on a level um and will they be interacting with each other um how many characters uh, it's kind of hard to see to say right now uh my guess is that there will be roughly the amount that uh, there are in luguru that would make sense make sense to me at least like maybe a bit more since they probably can now so maybe like around 10 something like that is what i can imagine it's like we don't really know yet though um i don't even i don't even think like david or aubrey really knows how many characters there will be yeah, I think that's going to kind of be dependent on what the um, how how well the game runs when they're finished, and then they can sort of decide how many characters can we fit on a level, you know. Yeah. So. Because yeah. if it if it ends if it ends up being like oh we can have one thousand characters then make like huge, incredible battles maybe like why not because that's, that's going to be super awesome. Yeah. yeah. So next question: What changes are uh, uh, let's see. This was written by a Russian dude who translated from Russian, so the questions are a bit weird sometimes. Uh, so I'm gonna try to... What changes are planning for game? And when is game released? <laughs> well, the, you know, uh, we don't... I mean, we personally don't know the answer to that, meaning um, how many changes are left in the game. We, You know, we know that they wanted to make the game have parity with the uh with lugaro which means that all the features that were in lugaro will be in overgrowth plus a few more um and they they have no plans uh no no determined time to release the game it's just going to be a matter of um when it's done it's done they don't want to release it early because uh, they don't want it to be broken um, someone so. in uh, the chat is asking us to like put subtitles on the video here um, on this part in particular I guess since we're answering questions from Russian people but um, I don't want to I don't want to make subtitles for all this it's I've made a lot of subtitles in my days when I made my first tutorials and uh, it's not a lot of fun it takes a lot of time so it would be better <laughs> if you can find someone who knows both English and Russian well and then he can translate it for you well <laughs> just so 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 that the team i mean so that the uh just so you guys know the uh we'll be sending back these yeah. um written answers to to sergey and and he will be uh relaying them to the russian um uh community uh, although apparently a few of them are here today so 
Um, Hello, yeah. Russian people. Yay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, are we skipping? Uh, okay, I, I can ask you that one. Uh, in the future, will the game support the Kinect? It could be interesting to use the Kinect as a controller for the game. Um, I uh, like. I don't think Kinect is fast enough for it, uh, personally. But it would be cool, maybe some kind of mini game or something. But personally, I don't think that will happen officially. Actually. Yeah, it seems. It seems. Um, while while the game does kind of support sort of any controller at the moment, uh, it seems like creating a, a system for the Kinect would be. You know, there's a reason that there are games devoted to the Kinect, not to um, all games. You know, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, tricky. It, I guess if uh, if he um, exposes, if he manages to make it so that you somehow can use like external di data sources or something in Overgrowth when you're like uh, Lua, Lua or Angel scripting it up, right? When you're scripting it. Uh, maybe you can somehow make that on your own, but that I, I don't think we will have that control. Uh, we'll see that. We'll see what happens. Yep. Um, it's yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, go ahead. Um, uh, next question is: uh, Will the team play? Uh, let's see. I should read through the questions. For <laughs> <laughs> so I guess will, will you will you play on the same team as a friendly uh, NPC if you're, for example, attacking an enemy's village or things like that? So, uh, in a relatively recent alpha, David added the ability to assign teams to NPCs, and uh, anyone on the same team can uh, will you know will protect that team member and uh, fight against opposing teams. I guess the question will be if there's a scripting scenario where you can be like, okay, as I you know follow me into battle, or um, you know let's go and attack this village together. Otherwise, it's a matter of bringing enemies to your allies and then your allies will fight them so yeah yep <laughs> um next question i guess yep unless you had something else to say uh yep. we should uh try to keep it quick we're only at question eight so <laughs> it, yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of questions here i don't know yeah so uh will there be custom uh will there be character customization in the game like scars tattoos yeah. hair things like that i'm, I'm gonna try um being quicker now so we can get 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 through this without having to spend another hour here um i think the current customization is what we will have in the game where you can add armor stuff to it and uh, change maybe the color of your character but uh, not much more than that and in the official campaign of course you would probably play with this character um, agreed and question nine how much characters uh, will be included in the game how many different characters yeah, this this is a tough question to fully understand. We know that there will be five races. There are going to be rabbit, cats, rats, dogs, and wolves. Um, they've mentioned a few times on the blog several different sort of factions within each race. Uh, you know, we know that there's a snowblood paladin rabbit, as well as sort of civilians and guards and the raiders. Uh, and then for dogs, we know that the swordbreaker clan, and, and they've mentioned a couple other clans in the comics, uh, but as for the exact number of characters that will be in the game um it's still hard to tell but my guess would be within each race there will be several factions and so you know that can easily be uh 30 characters yeah you know, 30 a individual lot, characters. characters so it'll be significant to say the least um okay are you planning on making a destruction system for the buildings i don't think they have that planned at all and i don't yeah. think it will happen so um question 11 what about weapon crafting um will there be weapon crafting in the game yeah uh it's one of those things where i don't it, it's not really a gameplay element since the, the game is not an rpg and it's a skill-based action combat i mean we should really kind of <laughs> remind people that it's a skill-based action melee like beat em up um Crafting is kind of uh, in a different world than than the overgrowth world so far. So um, I would say the the closest you can get is that there will be a lot of modded content, <laughs> and so you could mod your own uh, weapons into the game. And in fact, there's already a lot of custom content uh, weapons as it is. 
So, yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Otten says in the Wolfire chat that uh, that David did a uh, destruction demonstration. Uh, and, uh, yeah, for it. Yeah, that was for the old engine, for the old Phoenix engine. I don't know if it was called that even, but... Uh, so, well, it was for a totally different game. Yeah, that's too. It was, so. it was, it was for a run and cover uh, shoot 'em shooting game. So, yeah, um, it's like yeah, he can that, do it, but it, he probably won't do it for Overgrowth anyway. Yeah, especially not the way that they've been building the the models the way they are. It would sort of mean redoing all the models for the buildings. So probably not. Yep. yep. Um. So the next one is: uh, Will there be medieval siege weapons? Um, I don't think there are. I don't think there will be medieval siege weapons in the game. Uh, what I can imagine is maybe the, it will be some kind of like specific mission or something where there's something like that. But uh, I don't think they will be part of the game. Like, like they, they won't. I don't think they will be part of the game. Yeah. Again, remember that the game is really geared towards uh, melee combat. So. Um, it's all about being in close to your enemies, um, you versus uh, one to to five other people. I mean, if you're fighting five enemies, you know, <laughs> siege weapon just would wipe all of you out. So, yeah. <laughs> so uh, next question, right? Uh, will there yeah. be a dismemberment? Uh, as as we've discussed with David on the show, uh, it's not a priority. Um, we realize that, or he realizes that it's been uh, requested a lot, but it's probably um, not going to make it into the game. He he doesn't particularly find it appealing for the game either, so I'm going to say no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next question. Um, in the future, are you planning to have upgrades for your characters? Um there won't be upgrades for your character they won't be skill based upgrades at least uh they will have like the arena thing it's what they have planned now like they said they have this planned a, a while ago at least there will be an arena mode so yeah this like as i'm saying this everything we say here by the way is still like the current thought or the thought from like a few months ago and uh, of course things can be added with mods and things like that but anyway um they have planned an arena uh, game mode where you will be able to probably get new equipment and things like that but i don't think ever in the game you will be able to like make yourself stronger or faster or anything like that right and uh yeah although although we should we should point out that there's already two uh custom maps that um by reaching a certain location it changes your stats and does actually make you stronger and faster and more resistant to damage so yeah. some mods um, once again Mods. So modding, it is it is possible, although there's not an easy way to see what those changes are because there is no um, uh, GUI in the game, which Unless is... Unless someone makes a mod for it. <laughs> <laughs> they, can, right. they can add images and stuff now, right? So, no, they yeah. can. Um, yep. Are you planning uh, to add armor to the game, like wearing armor on the characters? Uh, yeah, we already discussed this in today's episode but yes um there will be armor and we have seen from a, a tweet picture that that will be coming shortly yep um what do you think about fire in your game it would be nice to burn some enemies i agree anton i agree <laughs> <laughs> uh yes i think since fire was in luguru there will probably be fire in overgrowth and uh, you know there will need to be light sources in a way, and every light source can't be like a lantern or a torch. There needs to be fires as well, like real fires. <laughs> so probably enemies can maybe get punched into them and start burning. I don't know. Yep. So I think the light points will come. Uh. Um, so how about ranged weapons? Will there be ranged weapons in then? Um, well, I think I think that endo perez can kind of answer this best but no <laughs> there will not be ranged weapons at least not um other than throwing your melee weapons i think that anything having to do with bows and arrows takes away from the melee aspect of the game and so we probably will not see that in the normal game uh, i do think that if it's not modded in 
quickly, it will be modded in a little longer than quickly. But yes. Yes. So no, I don't think any um, ranged weapons will be in the game. Um, so about the fighting system, will it be possible to uh, break someone's hand or arm uh, and uh, have that be a way to stop them from fighting? Um, I don't think so, since this game is about fighting and not about like, yeah, breaking people's hands and arms. Like I don't know how that would work, but um, they have said that they want to like give moral decisions but i think those will be mostly like either you kill them or you like just make them pass out or whatever so i don't think you'll be able to break hands and by the way for i don't know how many people are watching this but there is no uh, like you can't break bones in overgrowth just so you know uh we have said this many times uh we're not we haven't said it many times but a lot of people think that you can actually break bones in overgrowth when you like land on things and it sounds like it's things break but uh, they don't actually break it's just that you take damage based on where you hit uh with your body parts which you do in a lot of other games as well so it's nothing nothing special no no skeleton system that you can break just making that clear um but yeah <laughs> i i I almost made a video about that last night because uh, it just drives me crazy. But then I realized I didn't have time. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so yeah, your question. I don't think you'll be able to break break people's stuff, uh, break people's hands and stuff to make them stop fighting. So question nineteen: right. the game uh, will the game have an integrated animation editor? Um, there, there was an integrated animation editor early on, uh, around Alpha eighty, I believe. Um, and uh, it was very cool in the way that it worked uh, because it was all in game and it was very dynamic and you could animate anything. Uh, the problem was that uh, it was very limited in its animation capabilities and um, they needed to start adding in a lot of uh, things that are trickier with animation programs like bone restraint, joint restraint, uh, and flexibility and uh, all these things that they realized that that already exists in other free programs. Uh, one of the things that they wanted was that anybody without having to pay extra money could mod things into overgrowth and animations were one of the places where there wasn't a great option at the time. But after a while they realized that blender could fulfill their needs and it actually was a more robust animation system to begin with. So they have switched to, uh, animate, uh, to using Blender instead of um, their own. Yep. And uh, uh, so let me read your next. No. Uh, oh, did you have something else thing. to say? Yeah, I was just saying that uh, Miss uh, Miss uh, Hidna in the chat says, uh, "Sorry for the bad translation, guys. I'm guessing this is the person who translated the questions, and it's fine. Uh, I mean, there is a reason there is a Russian community for this, I guess. So." It's fine. We understand the questions. It's just a, a bit, a bit hard at times. So yeah. And so, uh, yep. So uh, next is: Will there be throwing weapons? Will there be throwing weapons? Uh, well, yeah. There are throwing weapons. <laughs> right. Every weapon can be thrown. So there you go. I guess uh, throwing stars and things. I don't think there will be like small like choo 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 throwing weapons or things like that. You know. But uh, you'll be able to throw your knife or maybe your sword. I don't know if you will be able to do that in the final game. But yeah, you'll be able to throw weapons, Ooh. just not a whole Ooh. lot of them. What about a time. spear? Yeah. What about a spear? Hope, right I now, hope... when you throw it. <laughs> yeah, I think there will be throwable spears and things as well. So yeah, it depends on what you mean, because there are throwing weapons. You can throw Ooh. every weapon. Right. Um, so, water will be added in the future. Uh, they're asking, will the... I see, so someone, someone sort of clarified the question, will the enemies have the ability to throw the weapons? Oh, okay. Uh, and, um, I don't think so. I don't think it's very fun to be hit by a knife from an enemy. Unless it's like made in a way where, uh, where it's more common and... Uh, you know how to block it, you know? Because you probably will feel like a badass if an enemy throws a knife and you just grab it in the air. That would be amazing. <laughs> I know, I would. Yeah. But at the other hand, like, if you get hit by that knife, you're going to be uh, at a big disadvantage. So it might not be a fun gameplay element. Right. But I guess we'll see what uh, David decides to do. Yeah, we'll see. 
Um, so yeah, I don't, water. Uh, oh, water. Will there be water in the game? Okay, so um, uh, that's that's a tough question that I think that the dev team doesn't necessarily know the answer to yet. For the most part, the physics involved in creating a water system uh, don't really add very much to melee combat. And so <laughs> there's definitely not a focus on adding a water element. Um, however, Aubrey, the artist, has said how crucial he believes the uh, water is to some of his levels and concept art. So I think probably what we'll see is we'll see animated water uh, that is not playable, has no physics, so you're not able to actually get in the water. So that's my that's my guess as to what we'll end up seeing. Yep. Yep. Um, next, uh, in the future, will weapons be able to be broken? Um, yeah, I mean, the staff in Luguru could be broken, so I think maybe, yeah, probably. We'll see. They haven't really talked about it from what I know, but uh, um, I think that it's something that could very well happen. Right. And uh, question 23 we're at now. Um, will there be upgrades for weapons? Will, for example, will you be able to sharpen your weapons in the game? You know, similarly to how there are no real upgrades planned for characters in terms of um, uh, stats, they probably won't have upgrades to weapons either. Um, although, uh, you know, it's always an interesting thing that, you know, will one sword be stronger than another sword? I don't know. Maybe. You know, so it's hard to say. <laughs> um, next, uh, do you plan on writing new music for the game? <laughs> I think you can answer this one as well, Anton. <laughs> Fine, I'll answer this one as well. Uh, so definitely, uh, definitely, as as games develop in general, you you tend to write a lot of music early on as sort of conceptual music, and then once you start to learn the actual, um, uh, the actual uh, story of the game, then you then you start to be able to focus on what kinds of music will actually be in the game. So. Um, there is uh, so so there is a lot of music already, but I think that there will be a need for a lot of different music. Uh, also, Miko and I who have been um, sorry, Miko and I who have already been working on the music uh, agree that there's some really interesting places for dynamic music, and we created some dynamic music that has not yet been shown to the community and has not yet been implemented in the game. Uh, but after we made dynamic music for receiver uh david actually got pretty excited about how uh how it interacted with the game world he was in um and so i think that there's more motivation now for him to actually implement that dynamic procedural music uh in in the game so yes oh, okay. there will be more music <laughs> um and uh, do you pull no that's not one i should ask you that oh do you yeah, want to skip that one? Uh, I'm confused. Uh, yeah, I'm supposed to ask this question, right? Do you, do you plan on releasing the game on consoles? Uh, <laughs> the game is currently aimed towards a computer release. David has said multiple times that they've never ruled out a console release, but it's definitely not a priority. Um, next. Uh, what about an opportunity to deny enemies like uh, in the Batman games and I think that they're talking about the stun feature in Batman in the Arkham Asylum Arkham City games um, you think there will be something like that um, I'm not sure I mean they some attacks are kind of like that like the you have the like chest punch in Luger for instance with like boom when they're too close and they just stumble backwards basically it's not, or is that in Overgrowth? Or is that in both games, maybe? Um, that's in Overgrowth, what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, okay, yeah. That, that's kind of like that. It doesn't do a whole lot of damage, right? It just makes them stumble backwards, basically, because they're too close. So, depends on what you mean. I guess there will be kind of stunts in the game, because you do, like, animations when you get attacked, but uh, I don't think there will be any moves that are dedicated to stunts, personally, is what I think. 
Because that's not what the game is about. It's about killing people or like fighting, not like swooshing your cape around. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. Um, so how many types of weather are you planning to include in the game? So, um, you know, uh, Aubrey has been creating levels with multiple seasonal variations. We've seen spring and uh, summer and winter variations so far. My guess is we'll see all four um, different types of seasons depending on the level. And probably what we won't see, though, since it is level based, is we won't see changes in those seasons um, other than you visit a place during one season and then when you return, it's another season. So that will be pretty much it. And uh, similarly, do you plan to make a day night cycle? Um, I don't think there will be a dynamic day night cycle because they have the pre rendered shadows, because that's more that just more runs on more people's computers. But uh, there will be probably the day maps and night maps, and perhaps even uh, like the day and night stuff might be synchronized somehow, so that your first start out. That's what I'm thinking of. This like when you play Half Life Two, you start out like it's day, and then as you play the game, it becomes night on the different levels, and then it's night, and then it becomes you no know, sunrise again. You know things like that. Maybe they will do something like that, but I don't think there will be a light day night cycle. No, that's not. That's what I think at least. So, right. will there be dynamic objects, and if so, how many? Um, so, this is items that can be like moved, like you know, barrels, uh, chairs, and stuff like that. So, physics on objects, basically. Um, you know, all I can say is that David has started adding that uh, lately. He's added like the the rat collection bag and the bone, the spine, spinal cord pieces, and things like that. I think that just going to be a piece that, or a part of it that grows. They'll add that to more items and then um keep going so um i don't i don't know what that exact number will be uh but certainly it's coming right now so um will there be uh in-game tutorials yeah i think there will be especially like there was something in luguru and you very much need one if you're new to this game so yeah there will definitely be a, a tutorial um, are you planning on translating the game to other languages, like Russian, for instance? So uh, there was a team that they used fairly early on called the Overt Ops, <laughs> which was a, a team of the community who translated all of the documents, including the frequently asked questions, into a lot of different languages. Uh, I don't remember the exact number, um, but there has been a, a strong push to make sure that there's localization for any language that needs it. Um, <clears throat> however, uh, at least currently, the, the the push in the game is tending towards a more uh, pictogram style dialogue system where uh, things are a little bit more implied as opposed to rather than direct text. So it's possible that they won't need to do localization um, translations, but if they do need to do them, like menu systems and things like that, I'm sure that they have plans to do that already. Yep. So, and uh, Tanya Vic just posted in a link, and maybe we'll try and remember that, is uh, a place where it shows off all of the languages that they have translated the, the um, you know, data into so far, yeah. all the text into so far. And it's a it's a pretty big list. It's willfire.com slash press if you want to check it out and you can see the chat. Yeah, it's a lot of languages. So, next question. Um, you're all gone, Anton. Anton, I can't hear you. I cannot hear you. I, I don't know what's happening. There we go. Uh Okay, so oh, yeah. Yeah. The, <laughs> the next question was, um, what do you think about ambient animals in the game? Um, things like birds, things that you don't play, uh, butterflies, um, <laughs> bees, I don't know, what else? Um, I think there will be those. I think they're quite important for you know make it, making a world feel alive. And especially, I hope they bring back the bird, or like the eagle or hawk, or whatever it's called from Luguru. Like when you started uh, any level in Luguru, right? You had the like eagle from above. It was like, you know, when you started, and like always there was you know the bird, and I really like that. 
Yeah. So hopefully I, there will be birds, things like that. Yeah, I think I think we'll see a return of either that bird or something similar. So. Yep, yep. Yes. Um. So, will there be stamina in the game? Um, it's it's interesting the the idea of stamina. Uh, I um. I don't actually think that it's very practical in a game of combat, which I know sounds sort of counterintuitive for something that's supposed to be reality, but you know, part of making games is making the game fun, and if your character gets tired all the time, uh, are you still having fun? And I don't really necessarily see any um, any point in in getting tired and wearing out. Yeah, I don't think it fits Overgrowth's gameplay, basically. Personally. Yeah. Um, next, uh, <laughs> how how popular do you think Overgrowth will be, and uh, do you think it'll be popular in Russia? <laughs> I don't really know a lot about Russian people, um, but I think the game will be very popular, considering it's uh, received so such a following already. I'm gonna s mute myself in uh, Skype now. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah. A lot of people are already following it. It's just going to get uh, like much bigger once it clo gets closer to release. Is what I think. Um, and what about mounts? Do you think there will be mounts in the game? Uh, I personally don't think there will be any mounts. Mounts meaning uh, horses, um, uh, I, or or other animals that you ride. I, you play as an animal and you move around already very quickly. Uh, there was not going to be an open world that you would need to ride for hours from one place to another. Uh, so I don't think that it's really going to be something that's um, necessary. So, um, speaking of, while I before I forget though, one of the things about the popularity of Overgrowth, the last time I checked, we were close to twenty nine thousand registered pre order uh, registered users on the pre order forum. So. Um, I, I think that uh, considering at the at the end of last year, I think in November or December, we were impressed that we had broken eleven thousand pre-orders <laughs> in the first three years. Um, that yeah, I think the game is definitely picking up steam in terms of its uh, popularity. Uh, okay, moving on because <laughs> I got to get to work. So, <laughs> One and a uh, half hour in. <laughs> um, uh, Will there be any kind of customization of weapons in the game? Um, probably not. Probably not. You can make your own weapons, though. Yes. That's what I think. Like a model. Exactly. It's very, it's like very easy to do, actually, even now. So it's going to get better. Right. Um, I I can answer this this question in the chat real fast. They're asking about Steam. Uh, it has already been confirmed that um, Steam will be. Uh, picking up the game um, in the future, uh, and anyone who pre-orders the game will get a Steam key uh, when it is released there. Yes. And um, so, yes, uh, are awesome. It's definitely uh, happening. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, how can people? How can like? How can we? How can everyone help with the development of our growth? And uh, I think that you actually answered this better than I ever would have. Uh, you can help by making videos, writing articles, spreading the word, um, make a sweet weekly live show. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, help get the help get the word out there because uh, people want to know about this game. So I think uh, yeah, that's a great way to help out. Yeah. Um, so yes, uh, any advice you can give to beginning game developers? Um, well, I guess I've been a beginning game developer, so hum, um, just to do what you think is fun. I guess it's basically what I've been doing, and it's been working for me. Just if you want to do something, you're like, I saw that model. I want to learn how to do that model. Um, just do it. Find a program that makes. What you, what, what you want to make and do it. It's not harder than that. 
And then if you fail, then you get back to it later on and you can try again and you'll build on your, the knowledge that you had before and you start building up, you know, your game making skills and eventually be able to make games. Unless, you know, you want to go to a school or something, then you can do that, you know, in many different ways. Yep. yep. So, uh, in which direction is the project going to like develop now? Um, what are the developers focused on uh, for the moment? Yeah, um, I mean the main the main thing that the game has been that the devs have been focusing on is just finishing the game, finishing that gameplay, and uh, you know, um, getting it out there. I think that's their focus at this point. Um, and then uh, I guess this will be our last question. Yeah, is uh, after the release, do you have plans to? Um, continue improving and I think expanding the game um, I think there will be surely be like updates to the game of course if they're needed you know every game has updates especially a game like Overgrowth that's so that has so good developers but uh, I don't know about like content patches things like that uh, I don't think we've had an official word on that yet actually uh, but uh, but I'm sure like they could happen because, of course, they're going to increase the sales when they happen, especially if the game is already w quite well known. But then again, like, there are so many uh, mods and things like that that will come. So, yeah, you never know. Um, so basically, like, patches um, are a given um, content updates. I'm not so sure. Yeah, I, I'm, I don't think that this game will feature DLC, uh, you know, as, as anything... I, I think I think a more likely scenario would be um, a really good user-made campaign or something like that. But um, yeah, I don't think that it's uh, yeah, you know, unless unless it's just another game built on the same engine because they want to uh, increase the sort of revenue based on the amount of time they spent developing the engine. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's it's about hard it. To say. I, I'm not even sure it's, they know even. <laughs> at this point. Yeah. They will probably just that, do what seems uh, to make sense at that point in time. Right. So, yeah, that's the final question. A lot of questions have been answered, and mm. that's because a lot of questions have been asked. Yeah. And of course, was, like you said, Anton, um, these questions we have like. Uh, we have answered a lot of them, and some of them even we have sent to like the developers to to David and Aubrey for for answering and uh, you uh, people who asked this, Mr. Russians, Mr. and Mrs. Russians people, uh, <laughs> will have your questions answered. Yep. And that so. is the final point on the agenda, I believe. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, yeah. That's it, right? I think that's it. So thank so. you much. Thank you very much for watching you. And uh, thanks to everyone in the community for watching and participating in the show. Thank you to uh, Morton, Aaron and uh, Emerson for being on the show like this uh, past, what is it? It's, it's been months now, a few months. Thank you guys for being on the show. Uh, thanks to all previous guests as well, of course. Um, the dev else? team. Yeah, the dev team. We don't want to thank <laughs> those people. <laughs> yes. uh, Aubrey, Aubrey, and David, and uh, Jeff, and John, and Philip. Even though Philip is no longer with him, may his soul rest in MIT. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Especially thank to like the dev team as well for. Thanks to Jeff for all the tweets. Thanks for like blog posts. Uh, thanks for everything i guess yeah it's it's been great and um you know we're excited to see where uh where the game goes where it ends up and uh and what this community can do with it yeah so thanks guys yeah one last time i guess thanks for watching and i will see you on the forums and in the irc and maybe on youtube sometime Great. Thanks a bunch, guys. Talk Bye. to you soon in, 
Enjoy OG Weekly. I don't know, I had to do it one last time.